So, example. Calculating h of n of an ideal low pass filter. So remember our ideal low pass filter has this brick like response here. So that's omega c. So this is minus omega c. This is omega. This is h to e to j omega. So that's our response here. So this means our inverse Fourier transform. Let's just draw this again here. So minus pi to plus pi h to e j omega. So e to j omega n. So this one here is essentially 1 between minus omega c and plus omega c and 0 otherwise. This means our integration only runs between minus omega c and plus omega c. So somewhere here is minus pi and somewhere here there's plus pi. And so what we have or is 1 over 2 pi and then we're just integrating from minus omega c to plus omega c and then just e to j omega n d omega oh, there, and we have forgot the d omega here so with that so we just need to solve this integral here so, so we just need to solve that so let's just write this down again here on this sheet h of n is essentially just h of n is essentially just minus omega c to plus omega c and then e to j omega n d omega and this just to have this here in the drawing because the integration only runs from minus omega c to plus omega c this is omega here and this is h to e to j omega so we're just having having this integration running from here to here and as this brick and this is essentially what we have here so we just need to solve this integral here and so what we have here is then, then just oops it's 1 over 2 pi missing here so then we've got 1 over 2 pi and then we have still our boundaries from minus omega c to plus omega c but the integral is solved and this is 1 over j n because of the chain rule here and then we have e to j omega n which is left here so the 1 over j n we can now just move out here so that is then 2 pi j n and then we just need to substitute these two values in there so the highest value first so that's an e to j omega c n and then minus the negative part here and then this is e to minus j omega c n yeah so like that so now the question the question is, what is that? So this term here, and um, remember, so this this is sine z equals to one over two j, and then then this is here e two 
zj minus e2 minus zj. And so if we have a look here at this formula here, then we see that this is here easily identifiable, that we have here the omega cn here as a z. And then the 2j is sitting here. So this is getting absorbed by our sign here. And then we've got just as a left over here pi n, and then this is sine of omega c n. Yeah, so h of n. And this is our impulse response of our ideal low pass filter. Let's write this down here again. So that's our h of n is 1 over pi divided by n and then sine of omega c n. So that's essentially a sinc function. So that's our ideal low pass filter. So now if you plot that, so this is n, this is our h of n, then um, obviously the, so the response looks roughly, roughly like that. Yeah, so if you plot this here. So now the problem is, remember that anything what is here should be zero. but it's not. So therefore, this system is basically non-causal. So it cannot be implemented straight away on an FIR filter. So, okay, so is there any solution to this problem here? So can we can we solve solve this problem here? So the question is essentially so how to how to make h of n causal. Yeah, so just now our h of n here is 1 over pi, pi and then n sine of omega c n is non-causal. But now remember our symmetry condition here. So how can we solve this? So So the solution, remember our symmetry condition here, so that we have the h of m half plus n is h of m half minus n. So we've got this shift operation here. Shift. So this means what we're allowed to do is so if if this is our is if this is our impulse response, our a causal impulse response here, and this is here our number our number of tabs. What we're allowed to do is here just to shift this into positive time. So we are allowed.
we are allowed to shift it to positive time. Yeah, so with this with this step here we are able to make this causal. So now we've got a second problem. So the second problem is that this h of n here, so 1 over pi n sine of omega c n, this runs to an infinite time. So this is infinite, infinitely wide. So this means if we are looking at this function here, so this function will go on forever. Yeah, so it will never stop. So this goes to infinity here in time. And this this is happening in the same way into negative time. Yeah, so this is running here forever. However, the problem is that we have only a finite number of tabs. Yeah, so, however, m, so our number of tabs is finite. Yeah, so for example, we have only 100 tabs or something like this, or 100 coefficients of our h of n. So our our h of our h of n runs from h of 0 to, let's say, so here from to h of m minus 1. And we know that this function even needs to be mirrored. Well, this is automatically the case, but this is running infinitely. So we need to chop off this function somewhere. So what we need to do is we need to limit limit the number of coefficients to m tabs. Yeah, so that's no longer infinite, but we need to chop it off. So this means so if we have m half here and we now we have our symmetry point around this here, yeah, so like that, then we need to chop this function off here at point zero and we need to do the same the same here at m minus one. So this cannot go further. So all these values here, yeah so these here, they are corresponding to our weights in our delay line here. Yeah, so remember, this is here then our h of m half, and then this is here our h of m half plus 1, and this is here our h of m half minus 1, for example, and so on. So with that we are generating m coefficients. 